Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing excellent. Right behind me here, I have an updated list of what we need to do on the FC before we hit the dyno. So here's our list. You can see some of it we got done already in a previous video, which is great. We still have some big ticket items, rewiring the fuel pump, putting on a new suspension, getting a new throttle body on, and we're getting a list of supplies ready so we have everything we need to have a very successful dyno day in just a week from today. So today, well, first off, let me show you most of the stuff we have sitting right over here. There's a lot of great supplies and treats in here which we'll be getting to actually in another video because today what we want to tackle is trying to fix and find the exhaust leak. Poor old girl has a pretty serious exhaust leak that makes her hmm, pretty loud and smelly inside. So here's a clip so you can see what I mean. So at this point you may be asking yourself why is there a vacuum cleaner shoved in the tailpipe of the RX-7? Well, we're going to use the trusty tried and true method of using this out to pressurize the exhaust system. Spray it with some soapy water, see if we can find any bubbles and find some exhaust leaks. Now before you all say, I just want to let you know we did clean out the vacuum cleaner. Yes, so it won't put any particles in the exhaust, into the turbine get stuck anywhere around there and potentially cause damage. So anything we find that's part of the pipe or a weld uh, that's missing a little piece in there, Jeff can zap it right away, right? Right, unless it's a part where it's actually from a gasket to like anything like that, we shouldn't really weld that together, but. Right, so our main concerns are one, the exhaust manifold to the engine block, two, the flex pipe right there, and three, this gasket right here. So let's get to it. All right. Hit it. Okay. So we found one leak from the exhaust manifold to the engine block, which is something we kind of suspected from where the noise was coming from. We're going to go ahead and check all the way back though, see if we find anything else. So, number right. one found. No. See, if, hopefully, there's no number two, but we'll find out. Yep, it's a straight up bubble party. Yeah, that's definitely the big one. Yeah, that's huge. Okay. <laughs> so after that little inspection, we found three leaks. One big one from the two bolt flange and two small ones, one further back and one at the exhaust gasket. So I actually have a new, uh, better quality exhaust gasket in a box right over here. So we're gonna grab that. It does mean pulling the fittings for the turbo, pulling that over, uh, getting that on there. Um, and then we've gotta figure out what to do with that two bolt. The good news is that's after the um, wideband sensor so it shouldn't cause any problems if we can't get it completely buttoned up as far as tuning but this gasket will and then hopefully Jeff can get under there and put a little bead right on that little pinhole one further back and we should have even better sounding exhaust all right so <clears throat> since we're gonna go ahead and pull the exhaust manifold out we have to disconnect some coolant and oil lines from the turbo to be able to pull it this way we decided we have some new silicone radiator hoses. So might as well drain the coolant and get those on there so we can upgrade as much as possible. <clears throat> and we're just gonna go ahead and get that old exhaust manifold out and get our new one in. Okay, so we got the old exhaust manifold gasket out. This is a cheap kind you buy when you order it through O'Reilly or Cragen or whatever. And this is an OEM piece. You can see it looks different. Um, so we're gonna replace that because we definitely had a smaller leak coming from the manifold to engine. So 
That looks like a nice piece, so we're going to go ahead and get that on and make sure it's torqued down really well. And then the other thing, the bigger leak, was from the two bolt flange. And I was using bolts like this, and you can see this head is really wide. And what we found when we took it off is that it wasn't tightening down all the way to compress the gaskets. It was actually hitting on a portion of the mid pipe. So when it was tightening, it wasn't actually closing that gap. So we got some thinner diameter bolts, which should be able to clear much easier so we can actually compress those gaskets. So we're gonna start with the exhaust manifold gasket, get that on, bolt it back up, and then we'll do another test by pressurizing the system and spraying it again. All right, well, we are covered in sweat and blood and oil, and we have fiberglass in our skin, but we got the turbo uh, uh, exhaust manifold off, new gasket in, put that in. We put the new bolts and really torqued them down onto the two bolt flange underneath. So now, fingers crossed, we're gonna turn the vacuum back on and double check those leaks. I'm gonna start with the two bolt flange. No luck with the two bolt flange, unfortunately. We put new bolts in, we put the gaskets in different configurations, one, two, three, torqued it down with the impact gun still leaking completely so I mean that's the source of our biggest loudest one but I guess the flanges we welded on when we made the exhaust are just totally irreparable or not usable so we're gonna have to do some more work on the exhaust which is probably not gonna happen before dyno day as I mentioned though yes that one is annoying um, and loud however it's after the wideband air fuel ratio sensor so it's just annoying it's not causing any problems at this point so we're gonna move on and test the exhaust manifold gasket which is critical this is a disaster everything is worse than when we started I'm not sure what we're gonna do I guess try and tighten this down more but it's fresh gaskets on the exhaust manifold and this V-band clamp, I guess we just have to take it off and put it back on again. Hopefully it seats better. Well, I'm pretty frustrated. We just went in there, got everything tightened down as good as we can. We took the V-band off. We retightened it, realigned it. Everything is still just bubbling like crazy, like unbelievable. So the only thing we can think of to do is try and heat cycle everything. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get the fluids back in from the radiator hoses we changed heat cycle it then we'll come back see if we can make any adjustments to the tightness of the bolts and the fittings and see if we have any improvement in the exhaust leaks wish us luck all right guys it's the next day i've had a cup of coffee it is the evening and i'm ready to try and tackle this again because the frustrations we've dealt with can be washed away by the thought of pushing the throttle all the way down feeling this baby hit full boost and driving away so here's the plan well here's the sit rep if you are not sure exactly where we're at we took off the turbo replaced the manifold with the or excuse me the exhaust gasket on the manifold with a new one that made the exhaust leak worse we reinstalled the v-band the exhaust leak got worse we put the two bolt flange back together with different bolts it remained pretty much the same, regardless of whether we use one gasket, two gaskets, torqued it down, didn't torque it down. So what we have right now is a problem with all the mating surfaces. My strategy for this afternoon is to, one, pull the turbo again. A lot of work, very hard, and I'm by myself, but I will do it. Second, after that, clean both mating surfaces on the turbo manifold and the block. Get the gaskets reinstalled try and tighten all four corners down progressively so it seats nice and flat hopefully hopefully that fixes our issue I'm going to clean the surfaces for the v-band as well just brake cleaner wipe it down with the scuffing pad and I'm going to clean out and lubricate the v-band clamp then after those things are done I'm going to pressure test the system again because those are mission critical items that are before the wideband air fuel sensor the two bolt flange down here is annoying, makes noise, it smells, but it's not gonna affect the AFR. If those things are good, good, I can move on and I will move to the two bolt flange and we'll pick up what I have planned for there if we get there. 
So now, take the turbo off again. Okay, so the mating surfaces look much, much better. Clear of carbon, the brake cleaner did a great job. So, now, I'm gonna get the gasket on and put it all back in and test it again and hopefully it's not leaking anymore. Okay, so I apologize because the time lapse stopped and I didn't realize it, but I got the turbo back on, manifold bolted down, progressively tightening the bolts and hopefully that's good. Um, I got the V-band back on and also I went ahead and put the two bolt flange back together. I took one gasket, cleaned it up with brake cleaner, and I went ahead and used this stuff. This is Permatex Ultra Copper Advanced Formula Maximum Temperature Gasket Maker. Um, I'm hoping it works, because that'd be a nice thing to get all this stuff solved. I don't know if, again, I could have done all this work. I've been working at here for probably three hours or more and it might not do anything, but I gotta try because that exhaust leak is so bad after we left it last night that it definitely needs attention. So, um, I need to let that dry for a little bit, which is fine. I need to mess around with the radiator hose, which was we put on yesterday, it was leaking a little bit. So, and I need to set up that vacuum arrangement to push air back through the exhaust system again, get my soapy water going. So. Um, I'll be right back with you guys immediately after an hour has passed for me and we'll see if I've had any luck. Here we are again. All right. Wish everybody cross your fingers because after this I'm out of ideas. You saw there was no bubbles. There's no bubbles. Thank God. Okay, so oh. now that's that's incredible news, and I can't wait to see how she sounds when I fire her up, especially inside the car and have it not smell and everything. But this does put us two days behind on getting ready for our Dino Day prep. Uh, bad news is I work pretty much every single day in my day job to before uh, Dino Day. The good news is. I got coffee, I got evenings, and we got all these LED lights up here in the garage. So we're gonna make it happen no matter what. And I do wanna get the car off for an alignment appointment before we go because it's a long drive up to the shop and the alignment is not good. So we don't wanna show up there with uh, chewed up tires. Anyway, um, I'm gonna go ahead and bleed the coolant for the 700th time this week. It's, you know, it's what I do to wind down in the evenings. I just come home, I blow open something in the coolant system, and I just sit here and I bleed it out for a good 30, 40 minutes while the car warms up. It's just what does it for me and makes me feel calm and, and centered at the end of the evening. All right, <laughs> I'll be right back. All right, guys, just finished uh, burping the coolant. She's all warmed up. Jeff just got home a little bit ago. How's she sound? She doesn't sound as sucky. Yeah. Go ahead and fire her up so we can give them a taste of the sound. Listen to how quiet it is up here. You can hear just the clicking of the injectors firing. You can't hear any of the exhaust. 
<sighs> well, how's that feel, Jeff? Well, I wasn't here for the actual fixing of the fixing part, but it's nice that it didn't defeat it and, you know, it was able to be salvaged within a 24-hour period. Yeah, you saw some highs and some lows today on this video. Um, but again, like I said earlier, everything's going to pay off as soon as I can mat that throttle and feel that boost. So thank you guys for watching. Expect a lot more in the coming days as we gear up for Dino Day. Remember, please like, comment, and subscribe. And when they ask you, tell them you want more. I'm gonna wake up, do